and do it. The final six home cooks are in downtown Los Angeles, where their culinary skills will be put to the ultimate test in tonight's team challenge. It looks like we are in a movie. The three judges coming out from the helicopter, all the wind. Whatever happening today is a huge deal. Welcome, everybody, to the top of Los Angeles. All right, guys, top six. I see five. Where's Chrissy? She's on the roof, but she couldn't make it up here. She's what? She's terrified of heights. Serious? And also people of color. <laughs> I'm definitely afraid of heights. And I realize how high up I am. I'm like, I'm going to pass out up here, and I'm probably going to die. Well, MasterChef waits for nobody. As you can probably guess, we didn't just bring you here for the view. Directly beneath our feet sits WP24. It's a stunning fine dining restaurant. Why very... would Wolfgang Puck allow this to happen? I always ask myself this question. I guess at this stage, it's like there's 20th episode, so like they're pretty fucking well versed, but it's still crazy. Modern take on Chinese cuisine. That's where you're going to face one of the most grueling challenges we do in this entire competition the restaurant takeover. Natasha, you own this building in GTO you Grand Theft Auto Online? The last challenge, you will be the captains in this team challenge. Please step forward. The last challenge that Bree and I went up against each other as team captains, I won. So hopefully I can keep that streak running. Natasha, since you had the best dish, you get to pick first. How does food from here I taste, huh, rich guy? I don't know. I've never been to fucking Wolfgang Puck eatery. Uh, the only time I've ever had Wolfgang Puck was is usually at like... Um, airports where they have like $25 sandwiches so I don't think I've ever been to like a Wolfgang Puck restaurant other than like the Wolfgang Puck like express airport food Captain and Jesse puts out beautiful plates and she's got finesse so Jesse wow I obviously want to be on Natasha's team didn't work out so well with Brie being the captain last time can't trust a vegetarian because she can't eat the food that's being sent out Bree, captain of the blue team, we still have. Chrissy downstairs, don't forget about Chrissy. James, and Luca. I'm choosing this person because I know they'll be comfortable with the cuisine we're working with today. James. Wow, good choice. Natasha, this next pick, you're picking for both teams, so you have a big advantage here. I would like someone who has been around the restaurant business before and still in it. So Luca is going to be my pick. So that means by default, Chrissy is in the blue team. Chrissy huh. has a no. record of zero wins in team challenges, which is impressive in no. the worst way possible. Are you guys ready? Absolutely. Yes, Automatic L. Let's get it on. Technically, she did get a dub on the fucking sushi preparedness challenge with Natasha because... The only time Chrissy is capable of winning is when the the uh, racism fusion dance occurs with Natasha. That's it. Chrissy, you okay, darling? We missed you up there. Let's uh, let's head back down. Uh, I didn't know you were scared of heights. Guys, come down, please. I want to introduce you to a very special man, Executive Chef John Lechtleitner. So wait, what the fuck? It's not even Wolfgang. I don't understand. I've actually never seen who the fuck uh, Wolfgang Puck is. Like, I don't even know if he's still alive or not, but like, what? They didn't even have the homie up here? Like, John is going to give you the most amazing demonstration, and then you are going to replicate those dishes. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Let's head over to the walk. Our home cooks will now have to learn the four top selling signature he's dishes. He's a god, of is WP24. he? WP24 Appetizers, steamed scallop shrimp shumai, and crisp lettuce cups with tempura sweet main lobster along with entrees, Singapore-style chili prawns, and stir-fried Wagyu beef with a chili garlic and sweet bean sauce. This is going to be for the shumai. It's a uh, oyster sauce, Shaoxiang stock, slurry, salt, sugar. Get it going. Drizzle in your egg. Let the egg cook all the way through. Throw in your crab. 
I gotta cook four-star Chinese food, and I hate Asian food, and I've never cooked it before. Oh my inside. god, you dude. go around and you start pinching around, and then put the whole plate just That's the biggest self-report, like dude. Seven minutes in the steamer. Based on feedback from the diners and performance in the kitchen, the judges will decide the winning team. So next we have the lobster. Take your lobster, drop them in one at a time. Anybody that, anybody that says I hate Asian food is just gigantic self-report. It is such a fucking diverse cuisine of different kind of like uh, ethnicities, different kind of geographic locations. Like you're just, what is Asian food, dog? Like, do you mean Chinese food, Japanese food, Korean food, Indian food? There's like hella different kinds of fucking food. All of it is delicious, by the way. Even within that, there's like so many different kinds of dishes that you could have. It's just straight up ridiculous to say something like that. Like, Asian cuisine was invented when her people were, like, barely coming out of the fucking caves. And she's over here being like, I hate Asian food. Losing team will face the dreaded pressure test. A little bit of cilantro. So, John, entrees, please. Uh, chili prawns. Chili prawns. Everything that is being produced tonight is being produced on a walk. And getting the technique down of working on a walk, that takes years of practice. You can't overcook your shrimp. I'm going slow so I can show you guys, but ideally you want to go faster. That man is a magician. I didn't even know you could cook that fast, and it looked that good. There's that. One more. Stir fry beef. You have uh, Chinese flat chives, budding chives, snap peas, snow peas. There's like 37 ingredients into it. It's quick. Start to finish. Two and a half minutes, and I was taking my time. It's a ton of info to take in at Oof. once. It's going to be intense. OK, guys, each team will have to serve 22 regular customers of this fantastic restaurant. And there's one more very important part of this challenge. I will be expediting. There's no way on earth that I am leaving that to any of you. Chef Ramsey is going to be expediting, which already freaks me out. I just hope we don't lose our focus while he's screaming at us. One hour of prep, and you've got two hours of dinner service. Are you ready? Yes, Chef. Yes, yes. Your time starts now. Off you go, guys. OK, guys. OK, this is what I think we should do. The home cooks must get organized quickly to prep for these highly complex dishes. You're comfortable with frying the lobster off? I feel 100% OK with that. Okay, I can do this, you mind? Then I'll be plating everything, putting it out in the window. Come on, let's do this. For the appetizers, Captain Natasha has assigned Jesse to the lobster lettuce cups and Luca to the scallop shrimp shumai, while she will handle all the final plating. So for both the appetizers and the entrees, I'm going to be on the end at plating, finishing all the garnishes. Like Captain Natasha, Captain Bree will be overseeing the final dishes and has assigned Chrissy to the lobster lettuce cups and James to the shumai. This is a nightmare scenario. I've got a vegetarian and a girl who won't eat Asian food. How the hell am I supposed to prepare modern Asian cuisine with those two? I mean, you gotta cut a little faster one of them at least knows how to fucking whip it up, you know? The other one's just racist, but... Good, good, good. I think Brie at this point is like fucking proven that she knows better than most others how to fucking cook, you know? As hard as it gets, they're gonna cook Asian food in woks. I wouldn't know how to cook in a wok. Yeah, because you don't know how to cook, dog. That's why. Like... I mean, nice admission, but like, uh, duh. Yeah, we know you wouldn't know how to cook in a wok. You wouldn't know how to cook in a regular pan either. Because you just don't know how to cook. You've never cooked. You're not a chef. You're a restaurateur. And don't forget, it's three versus three. I mean, this isn't like the wedding where it was double that amount. This no. is really small kitchen crew. Team effort is crucial. The timing is paramount. They have to taste what they're cooking and be quick. As night falls, WP24 is open for business. And the pressure is on for our home cooks. Just under 10 minutes until our first tables sit down and order. Yes, chef. Let's go, guys. You know, the prep part was pretty easy, but steaming these guys and having a sauce ready for them right away is not the easy part. All right, James. Here we go, baby. First table, blue team. Two covers table, 50. One, two, my one lobster. Yes, chef. Thank you. This is it. Okay, on all the red teams. Yes, chef. 
Two cover symbol, 52. One two my one lobster. Yes, chef. Thank you. Let's go, guys. Is that steamer on full? Yes, it is. It should be. No, it's not. Oh, wow. Now it's on full. Chrissy. If yes. the steamer's not steaming, slow down on the salad. By the time, in seven minutes' time, what's going to happen to them? They're going to get soft. Yeah, it'll be like eating a soggy blanket. Okay. Start again. Okay. Where's the lobster? Right here, chef. Lovely. Very nice. Service, please. Pick up. Chef, order up. Service, please. Red team, 33. When I think about how hectic it can be in the master chef kitchen, now that I'm in a real kitchen, this is crazy. This is insane. Two sumai, two lobster blue team. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Nice, 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 nice. We're soaring. Chrissy's moving quickly. Bree is garnishing, dressing, and calling out orders like a mad woman. One shumai, one lobster, followed by one shumai, three lobster. Shumai is coming off my station perfectly. That's brilliant. Chrissy, yes, keep chef. it going. Yes, chef. Keep it going. Service, please. While the blue team is rapidly sending out their appetizers, the red team is falling behind as Luca is struggling with the steaming of the shumai. We're dragging on the appetizer a little sure. bit. We need to pick up the speed. Come on, Luca. I have no idea what's going on. This is supposed to be put the dumplings in the steamer. The steamer cooks them for you. I have no idea what I'm the doing. The steamer. Luca? <laughs> yes, yes. Come on, guys. Put the dumplings in the steamer. In the dining room. Things are about to go and from bad to worse for, for the you. red team. As Joe is summoned by Bro, a... I'm sorry. I know he's Italian-phobic as fuck, but Luca literally speaks like a Nintendo character, okay? Very angry customer. He's just straight happened? like, it's a me, a Mario. A raw scallop Oh my God. Completely raw. Always. Guys, red team, I got a freaking completely raw. You guys gotta steam these things. Red team, come here. What is that? Not done. Bra. What is going on? Chef, we, we need to turn it up more. Minutes. They were there for seven minutes. Is the steamer up? Yes, chef. Is there any water at the bottom? Yes, chef. Just put it in. You put it in? Yes, chef. Cold water or hot water? I think it was cold. Wait, what the fuck? Hold on. We interrupt this broadcast to deliver to you breaking news. Former chief of staff of a GOP state senator in a, gets in a road rage incident, rams his BMW into the Prius on the driver's door, and then begins pushing the car sideways, and then he shoots a gun at the white Prius. The Prius driver draws a gun and fires back and fucking kills him. A Talanasty road rage incident. This man also was arrested for a separate road rage incident at the same intersection in 2014. Oh my God, dude. Talk about a fucking good guy with a gun once and for all, dude. This is like the ultimate story. BMW drivers get fucked, okay? Prius drivers on top, saving the environment in both ways, not even in one, but two separate ways, even though Prius drivers are trying to dog shit too. Oh my God, dude. This is the most talonasty story on the planet. I swear to God, Florida is just like a different planet. I drive a BMW Sag. Well, don't drive it like a fucking normal BMW driver then. That's awesome. Turns out, yeah, I'm, I'm pro gun rights. More gun rights for Florida, I think. I mean, this is Florida, by the way. It is a stand your ground state so obviously fucking castle doctrine state extends to all leon county sheriff's office took one person to custody after the january 6th events however that person has since been released no charge has been filed wait what the office issued an initial statement reporting a fatal shooting that occurred last thursday shortly after 5 p.m near the intersection Following an altercation there are conflicting reports about what happened though it appears that the events escalated to a fatal violence following a traffic incident Source familiar with the details in the investigation told Florida politics that Kujwanski apparently caused the auto incident that began the chain of events and that he began to the shootout that led to his own death. Get fucked, dude. Fuck around and find out. Oh, my Lord. Oh, that's awesome. What a great story. Yeah, Florida, PVP enabled all the time. You know this. I would love to see footage of this, by the way. This is fucking hilarious. 
The sources say the incident began after uh, Kuchwanski's BMW drifted out of its lane while heading north on Thomasville Road, and it hit a white Prius. Both cars pulled into a parking lot. The driver of the Prius confronted Kuchwanski about hitting him. The Prius driver got in his car to wait for law enforcement after confronting Kuchwanski. That is when, according to Florida politics sources, Kuchwanski rammed his BMW into the Prius on the driver's door and began pushing the car sideways in the parking lot. Kuchwanski then shot a gun at the white Prius. According to the sources, the Prius driver drew a gun and fired back into the windshield of Kuchwanski's BMW. He was hit and killed, according to the sources. Get fucked. Oh my God, dude. By the way, this is like, you know, just the most normal, least aggressive uh, American day, by the way. Just the most normal day in Florida. However, Kuchwanski's wife, Rebecca Kuchwanski, said on Twitter that her husband was a victim and confirmed he lost his life. She claimed that he was trapped and assassinated, was trying to escape the person shooting at him. Yeah, okay, dude. He was on his way home early for us to, for, early to pick us up for a farewell dinner for our daughter. He called to say he was on his way to beat traffic. He was excited for dinner and to see us. He told us he loved us and then never came home. Our whole lives are shattered. The incident took place less than two miles away from his house. He leaves his wife behind and two children. Uh, he was a quiet fellow. Everything in his world was about his family. He pleaded no contest to an assault and disorderly conduct charge in 2014 related to a separate road rage incident at the same intersection. Oh my god, the final tweeted on his t Oh, dude. Oh, that's the cherry. That's the meringue uh, cherry or whatever the fuck it's called on the top of this, this ice cream sundae. The final tweet on his Twitter account, an announcement that he had entered an online raffle for a firearm worth $5,000 was posted on December 9th. What is it called? Uh, Maraschino? Maraschino? Whatever. Bro, I love that, dude. Win the logo arms alien pistol. See, if he had only won that arms, he probably still would have gotten fucking killed because none of these dickheads even know how to shoot for shit. Oh, that is... That is fucking funny, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, let's keep going. So you put cold water in the... If you put cold water in the steamer, what happens? It's going to bring down the temperature. There you go, guys. This is a disaster. Sorry. At this point, I'm just wondering how are we going to come back from this? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Our top six home cooks have taken over the upscale modern Asian restaurant, WP24. Tonight's diners have a choice of two appetizers, scalloped shrimp shumai or crispy lobster rolls. The blue team is off to a great start. What do you think so far? Oh my god, the shumai is unbelievable. Really? While the red team continues to have problems with Luca, Luca's what the shumai. fuck are you doing, bro? It's you are gonna cook. That we've been putting these plates out, but my I'm girl Jesse, dude. And I know that we can fix this. Red team captain Natasha decides it's time to take over from Luca on the shumai appetizer. Come on, guys, let's let's focus and regroup here, okay? Chef, order up. Nice. The winner of this challenge will be decided by the judges based on team performance in the kitchen and feedback from the customers. Last two tables. Let's go. Woo! Get fired up, Blue! Yes, there you um, go, chef. Service up. Nice. Blue team, really well done, no, the appetizers. No, Thank you, you, chef. If you do that for the entrees, it's a home run. Yes, chef. Thank, Thank you, chef. chef. I'll tell, yeah. guys. Woo! Chef, order up. Yes, Excellent. Chef. Excellent. Table 43. Thank you. Right, red team. That was a bad start. We can pull it back to the entree. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Okay. We really messed up the appetizer. So right now we just need to keep on going and make sure that the main course will be perfect. On order, red team. Three beef, one prawns, yes? Yes, chef. Good. There we go, there we go. For the entrees, red team captain Natasha will continue to plate and has assigned Luca to the Wagyu beef stir fry and Jesse to the Singapore style prawns. Two beef, two prawns. Yes, chef. On the blue team, Captain Bree will plate and has assigned James to the beef and Chrissy to the prawns. 
I'm looking at the notes that I have taken, but I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I I'm lost. Um, wait, should I? Oh, you know what? I can't remember what the plate's supposed to look like. Chrissy, does that look right to you? Um, there it is. It doesn't look right to me. And I'm like, I don't know what I did wrong. You put too much in all at once. Oh, it was coming. Chrissy is handling that walk with the finesse of 27 drunk bulls in a very, very small china shop. Order up, chef. Is everything okay, chef? No, it's not okay. No, it's not. Come around. Chrissy, Chrissy James, come here. The shrimp are cold and the shrimp are raw. Who's cooking the shrimp? Chrissy. You can see they're raw, right? Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, yeah, chef. Start again. Yes, yeah, chef. The whole round. Got it, chef. Yes. What, what do you mean the whole round? What, what do you think I'm going to do? No, we're not going to do Send half the table? Of course, the whole table. While the blue team struggles with their entrees, the red team has finally started to find their groove. Chef, order up. And dishes are flying out of the kitchen. Natasha, great start, yes? Yes, Chef. Keep it going. Thank Let's you. Go. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. Our service for entrees is just flying by. We have plates going left, right, left, right. Jess and Luca are totally rocking those walks. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. We got this. Die, 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 guys. Die. I had the red team's prawns. The spiciness was exactly what I was looking for. It actually wowed my expectation. Let's go, let's go, guys, let's go. While the red team is finally seeing some success, the blue team is falling even further behind. All right, how long is it going to take you to get those prawns ready? I don't know. I, 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 hey, I, hey, 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 come on. Bring it back. Chrissy, what's wrong? I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I am literally ruining everything for this team. And I'm not doing it on purpose. Is this, is this on? Bro, it took Chrissy 20 episodes <clears throat> to finally have some sense of self-awareness. That she is the Chrissy factor, okay? She is the L machine, dog. Look, it's not on, so oh I'm gonna crank up the heat. There you go. This isn't my thing. Just might as well send me home now. While the blue team struggles in the kitchen, Joe is busy fielding angry complaints from the diners. It's Trouble been at least an hour since I know. we've eaten anything. And I, and I apologize. I know it doesn't help, and I know it's late. I know you've been waiting a long time. I'm gonna go back and check on them again, and I do apologize. Everything's burned on this block. I gotta start over. Christy, I, I got some blue team tables who are ready to walk. They've been waiting an hour and a half for entrees. I'm disgusted with the performance of our team right now. I don't know what to do. I can't do the job of leader and do the job of the line cook at the same time. Bree needs to step in and save this. Bree, blue team customers are starting to walk out. Starting to walk out. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but there's nothing coming out. How do you not know what's going on? You've been telling them it's fucking raw. Dinner service is in full swing at the prestigious WP24 restaurant in downtown LA. While the red team is quickly getting entrees out to diners, the blue team is at a standstill as Chrissy struggles with the Singapore style chili prawns. Joe's dying in the dining room. Customers are complaining. We have customers that are leaving, guys, walking out. What am I doing? Please tell me what I'm doing with this. This is the complete opposite of how it was going with the appetizers. The appetizers were absolutely perfect, and the entree round is a disaster. Now, now it's burning. I'm literally broken at this point, and I don't know what else to do. The classic 1-1. One, one. It is a complete relief to see Graham step in. So get it hot, and then start working it. There you go. Three beans, three prawns. Are you Hello. kidding me? I Graham is literally minutes. helping a team now? Okay, you'll be done in two minutes. Good. Get your sauce right, and you're going to warm it up, and you finish your prawns in there. As bad as I'm feeling, there's people out in that dining room that want their food, and I've got to suck it up. Come on, Chrissy, fight back. I, I got it. I got it. Here, Bray, behind you. With Graham's help, the blue team is finally getting entrees out to the customers, and Joe checks in to see how they rate the dishes. So, sir, what did you think of the red team's entree? Well, I had the chili prawns. The chili prawns. And the flavor was unbelievable. Wow. I had the blue team's prawn, and it was, it was chewy. It was, it was 
not very good tasting. No way, we're catching up, we're catching up. Yes, we are. We're Keep fine. up the pace, guys, we're doing okay. So I had the beef dish from the red team. It was fabulous, I think. If they make you wait an hour and a half for an entree and it's not the greatest thing that you've ever tasted in your entire life, that is an unforgivable, an unforgivable slight. Like that's, like I've had situations where I've gone to restaurants where I have waited for almost an hour. Like, um, what's the, the Israeli fusion one that I talk about, like Bavel. But then the food is so fucking dank that it doesn't matter where you like forget how long you had to wait. Okay. But like, even then I'm still a little bit averse to going back there because of how long you had to wait. <clears throat> no shot. Like if the fucking prawns are chewy, it, it's a wrap. You should be able to go in and, and fight uh, Chrissy at that point. It had great flavor. It had a good pop. I had the blue team's Wagyu beef. I've eaten at a bunch of different uh, high quality Asian restaurants around the country, and this one by far, right up there. Last two tables, guys. Last two tables, pick it up. Let's go, let's go, guys, let's go. How far are you from being yeah. done? You ready? All right, we're ready, order up. Very nice. Putting up the last plate, it's amazing. We did a good job. Good job. We were great. I'm extremely proud of my team because we were able to work together and overcome the fact that we didn't have such a good start. Thank God you worked as a team for the entree. Great job. Blue team, red team have finished. Two beefs, two prawns. Chrissy, yes? Yes, sir. I definitely have a much bigger appreciation for anybody who cooks at this level. This was intense. Come on, guys, last table, come on. Come on, guys. Okay, Chrissy, I need prawns right now. Here you go, Bray. Two prawns behind you. There you go, Chef. Service 4142, please, yes? Chrissy, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Chrissy, James, Bree, well done. You, Look chef. at me, that was a slow finish. Yeah. It's about the flavor, okay? But With you failed. service completed, the diners complete their comment cards. The winner of tonight's challenge will be decided by the judges based on this feedback and the team's overall performance in the kitchen. The losing team will face a pressure test. I, I was like beating myself up big time. Yeah. Like I really was. I know it's frustrating, but like if we really think about it, three home. I feel like Chrissy's disadvantage. Loki is an advantage. Because she has faced more pressure tests than anyone. And the reason for why she has faced more pressure tests than anyone is because she consistently loses. So in a weird fucking way, because she's constantly on the losing team and she's never won before, she's just like, she's always at the pressure test. She's literally always doing pressure tests nonstop, which gives her this like weird advantage. No experience working in a professional kitchen. Yeah, Come in and bang out a dinner night. service. Although our food was slower getting out, I'm really hoping that the quality of our food is better because I know that the red team had more dishes sent back. You know, maybe they can overlook the fact that the appetizers didn't come out the way that they should have. Both teams had ups and downs. The stupid dumplings. Overcooked, raw, cold inside. Even if we did a great main course service, I don't have any excuses to how bad I perform in my appetizers. Red team, blue team, seriously, all of you should be incredibly proud of what you accomplished tonight. You ran the kitchen of one of the best restaurants in this country. There's something that I think all of you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> now, we listened to all the diners' feedback. We watched every dish leave the whole... was like, three of these champagnes are poisonous. That's right. Blue team, you've, cho you've chosen the poisonous champi. Hot plate. We dissected everything you cooked. And we will decide which team 
is heading to the dreaded pressure test. And that team is... going to be decided... overnight. What? We've got some serious thinking to do. Good night. The judges are not going to tell us tonight. Now is the time to relax. I think we did an amazing job. But tomorrow is another day. Anybody can go home at this point. You know what? I've, I've quite literally gotten used to Gordo Jubate at this point. Like, I can't even think of a, a reality TV show that wouldn't be constantly fucking hitting me with Jubates over and over again now. Like, I expect it. You know what I mean? It's always just a fucking Jubate. He's never been straightforward, ever. Maybe not a good thing, but still. The final six contestants return to the MasterChef kitchen to find out who won yesterday's restaurant takeover challenge and to discover who will face tonight's dreaded pressure test. The last supper table. I look at it this way. Entrees, we were 10 minutes behind. Apps, they were 10 minutes behind. At the end, I still think we did a good job. The only problem was those dumplings. The dumplings were just like a hiccup. I don't want to go in a pressure test with Jesse and Natasha. I don't even want to think about it because the risk to be eliminated right now is too high. Last night, you ran the kitchen of one of the finest restaurants in the entire country. You guys each had your ups and downs. Oh, he brought the fucking red bow tie back. Oh, my God. <clears throat> this is no longer a rare gram. This is a dangerous gram. But overall, the three of us were extremely proud of what you were able to accomplish. But there has to be a winning team and as always, a losing team. We watched you cook, we spoke to all of the customers, and we tasted everything you made. One team- Oh my God, no cuff, he's uncuffed. Straight in to the top five of this competition. He's uncuffed, boys. The other team will shortly face one of the most dreaded pressure tests so far. The winning team. Congratulations. Red team. Yes. Called it. We L, Chrissy, you, it's L. Not how you start, it's how you finish. And you finish strong. Head up to the gallery. Well done. I don't want to be in another pressure test. I've been in every pressure test, and I'm sick of it. Well done. Wow. Let's switch these out. So, blue team, you know what this means. One of you will be walking out of those doors when this pressure test is over. Bree, based on yesterday's performance, who out of the three of you, including yourself, should be safe from elimination? Oh, herself. Looking back into what was done in the kitchen. Yeah. Bro, imagine this fucking vegetarian Andy literally turns around and saves Chrissy right now. I will, I mean, no shot. It's not gonna happen. Like. She has to save herself. Attitudes of my teammates, I would choose myself. You think that you would perform the best? Yes. Chrissy, what do you think about that decision? She knows that that's I mean, Chrissy has no fucking ground to stand on when she herself even had a unique revelation, a moment, a rare moment of self-reflection. Like, she literally experienced that where she was like, Oh no, I'm kind of fucking up this walk, dude. Like, she literally doesn't even know how to fucking walk it up. Bree, fortunately for you, you do not have to make such a difficult decision. Because tonight, all three of you will be cooking in the pressure test. Oh! Are you 
Bro, that is so fucked up. I cannot believe they did that. Bro, that is... Oh, come on, dude. That is so rude, bro. Are you serious? After she gutted her fucking team? Dude, that is actually fucked. Oh my god. I just, I hate, I hate that. And you say you can predict them? No, I didn't say I can predict them. I said that, like, Gordo has caused me to no longer trust the British. Okay? That's right. I'm bravophobic. Okay? And the reason for why I'm bravophobic is because Gordo has never been straightforward ever. Like, I feel like he debates his wife and children. For, like, unnecessary things. Like, he'll be like, uh, or his daughter will be like, uh, what's the, uh, you know, what's for dinner tonight, dad? And he's like, tonight we are going to be having duck pate. That is, of course, if we lived in opposite world, actually tonight we're having fried chicken. Like, like no, no reason for that. You, you, no reason for you to do that, but you're still doing it. He's just like a demon, dude. He's never actually fucking been straightforward in his entire life. It's so strange. Are you ready to find out what you have to cook in order to stay in this competition? Yes. It's one of the most common menu items across America. It's a dish that will test your knife skills, your prep work, your sauce work, and especially your frying technique. I grew up eating this along with most of America. Calamari. Dude, are you fucking joking, dude? Really? Can you give more fucking bonuses to... Yo, it's literally a Chrissy challenge. They should just call it... Instead of the pressure test, they should call it no pressure for Chrissy test. A plate of fried calamari with flavorful marinara sauce. We want the most perfectly crisp, perfectly seasoned calamari. We want a marinara sauce that perfectly complements the calamari. Have you had calamari? Yes. Love it. Grow up on it. All of you are going to have to start with six whole stunning squid. <laughs> stunning. <laughs> Motherfucker's never, he's never seen a, a, a piece of meat that's not stunning, dude. Stunning squid. Absolutely fucking stunning. You'll have to clean and prepare yourselves. Head to your stations. On Not your just stations, any squid. You all have it's identical stunning ingredients. Squid. Six fresh squid, AP flour, cornmeal, breadcrumbs, eggs, buttermilk, tomatoes, garlic, lemon, parsley, and seasoning. You have to know exactly what you're doing. And during the preparation, you have to navigate that ink sack very carefully as not to puncture it and spoil that calamari. It may look like an easy plate, but let me tell you, this is a very difficult challenge. Your 45 minutes starts now. Calamari, something that seems super basic, but technically difficult to master. What makes it so great? What are the steps? First and foremost important, the preparation. So you take out that spine at the back mm -hmm. that you pull out, take off the tentacles, remove the skin, mm -hmm. and then fingers in and start removing out all the guts. So if you gently grab a quill from the- By the way, this is yet another like anti-Brie uh, challenge. I, I get it, like she's a vegetarian, like that's an L, whatever. But, like, all of the challenges so far have been, like, pro-Chrissy and anti Bree. Like, I really hope she fucking pops off here in the, in the races to finally eliminate Calamari, you can remove the whole interior in one shot. Gets everything out. If you start destroying it, then you're in trouble. Right, absolutely. It's a tough one, this one. Ah. No, it's not that, it's not, I'm not talking about, like, cooking calamari. Like, she's done calamari before, but, like, she has to prepare the squid. I quite like it once it's been cleaned, sliced, 
and then into some form of milk or buttermilk to tenderize it in the batter. Right, it also helps to keep that batter on it. Mm -hmm. What would you dredge them in, Brent? I would make a, a really seasoned flour with maybe some of the Italian seasoning, a lot of salt and pepper, just get them dusted in that, and then you get them into oil that's at about 350. The oil temperature is the single biggest point of jeopardy in this competition. The idea is to fry... Shut up, Joe. We know you don't know anything, okay? They didn't... Notice how they didn't say, what would you do, Joe? And you just chimed in. It's because they know you don't know what you're talking about because you've never cooked a day in your life. I'm sorry, but that is just the fucking truth, okay? Chill. Fry a little bit at a time so the oil doesn't change temperature too much. They never get soggy. Let them get crisp, and then you can gather together a portion. It's very technical. So marinara, you're going to know this. So marinara is classic. Extra virgin olive oil, garlic cloves, mm -hmm. whole plum tomatoes. Break them up with my hands. Italian spices, that's it. It's the acidity that really juxtaposes the sweetness mm -hmm. of the fried yep. calamari. I've already achieved one dream, and that was becoming top six. Now top five's the next, so I'm gonna push and make the best possible calamari I can. I think that James has a real leg up over the other two. I mean, he's done it before, he's cleaned the squid. That's a big part of this challenge. Gotta be careful. My money's on Brie. She's smart, she's very clever, she thinks a lot. So I'm hoping tonight she shines. But I think Chrissy, she's gonna be able to nail it. Marinara sauce, it's like her favorite thing in the world. So she has to find a way to get in the zone, get that calamari clean. The only problem is she's cooking angry. She is pissed. How the do you get this out? Uh -huh. I have no idea. <laughs> Dude, Graham is so sweet. The only problem is she's cooking pissed. You can't do that. <laughs> I love that. Dude. This is painful. What she doing? What she doing? I don't know. Can you shut the f up up there? I might not be an expert at breaking down squid, but damn it, I'm going to try. Please go home. Go f yourself, Luca. I love you too. Whoops. Jeez. Oh my God. A menace, dude. By the way, that kind of behavior in the kitchen. Oh, Graham is so mad. Oh, dude, this is this is demon time for Graham. Notice how I said this is a this is not a rare Graham. This is a mad Graham. Okay, that. What do we know from reality TV shows like Ninety Day Fiance that we reacted to a way long time ago? You do not disrespect the barber shop. What do we also know? You do not disrespect the kitchen, okay? Not on Graham's watch. Joe Bastianich might actually have a soft spot for Chrissy because, you know, she reminds Joe of his mother, uh, who also may or may not be, you know, questionable uh, in her, uh, uh, you know, points of view. But Graham, Graham does not appreciate you destroying the process. That is otherwise a delightful experience. A yummy treat is about to be served to this man. And you are making a mockery of this institution. That's messed up. Wow. In this pressure test, Bree, James, and Chrissy have just 45 minutes to make a perfect portion of fried... Questionable, she own a slave dog? I think that's beyond question. Okay, that's true. No, I just meant like... I don't know if she's uh, racist or not. Calamari did have a and marinara sauce from fresh squid they must butcher and clean themselves. Gross. Sorry, Bree. You got it. Oof, damn, you got the ink sack on that. For the record, uh, uh, she she had an Italian indentured servant. That's why I said I don't know if she was racist or not. Yeah, Joe Bastianich's mother actually won in a court a lawsuit against uh, the formerly employed indentured servant, uh, where. Her former indentured servant literally fucking sued her for, for damages and for stolen wages because she had not been paid at all. And then the court famously described 
exactly what slavery is and then said because it was slavery it's actually not slavery pretty much just under 20 minutes to go right Bree are you confident definitely chef I have to be confident you're a vegetarian and the big question for me is are you tasting it tonight I taste my flour before I season it so you're gonna eat the flour yes and you're not gonna taste the squid correct right Who's going home tonight? Uh, Chrissy. Whatever. Good luck. I want to stay in this competition more than anything. I have a fire that no one else has because this is my second chance and I can't let the judges down. Hi, Chrissy. You seem like you're frustrated or cooking angry. Mm -hmm. And now you've got these three 10 feet above you watching your every move mm -hmm. and they want you out. They're scared of me. That's why they want me to leave. I've dominated every Luca, you scared? every pressure test. Yeah, I'm not scared of Chrissy at all. No. Natasha? Who's going home today? They all point to you. Mm -hmm. I just may go home and they might get their wish, but if I don't, they better know that I'm coming for them and I'm coming for them hard. I know they only hate me because they fear me, but they're too stubborn to admit it. Because you can kick me, you can stomp me, you can beat me with a bat. I'm gonna keep getting up and I'm gonna win this whole competition. Got five minutes to go. Speed up, guys. Come on. What's she doing? Why would you put lemon in the marinara sauce? I thought this challenge would. Here it is. Just a quick John Kuznowski break. Really quickly. Uh, here is the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, tweet. Of course, there is always one. He says, here's a... Here's an easy test. If the people Kyle shot did the exact same thing to him in front of a police officer, would the police have shot them to prevent the killing slash potential killing of Kyle? I said this dude literally got murked by a Prius driver after he tried ramming into him with his BMW and shooting at the Prius. There's always one, dude. There's always... There it is. There's always one. Okay. I mean, that's the real pack watch moment right there. Straight up. Straight the fuck up. I can't wait for fucking Republicans to turn this into like a, uh, you know, liberals are fucking making fun of a conservative dying. Even though like he straight up was, as far as uh, the information we have. He straight up was like responsible in every capacity. Like, like started the uh, altercation, escalated it, and then straight up got fucking owned. Rarely ever do you, you know, have a moment where there's like a legal kill that is actually straight up legal that is not just like especially in a state like florida that's not just like i don't know some fucking old rich white guy that got scared of like black teenagers at a gas station and direct and then started opening fire onto their car that's a real story by the way that actually happened in florida um usually it's stuff like that right <clears throat> you don't usually get the good guy with a gun actually defending themselves you know What is this? Tenants who are not vaxxed, they're getting yeeted. The Ronald McDonald House in Canada will evict all tenants, adults, children over the age of five who are not vaccinated by the end of January. The father of a young boy with leukemia responds to some crazy evil like I've never seen in my life. That's okay. That's really fucked up. But also, why the fuck are they not getting vaccinated? I don't understand. I mean, this seems like another one of those like weird fucking reactionary stories, and I'm not going to look into that right now. We'll look into it later because it's Master Chef time. It was difficult, but attainable. Sure. From what I'm seeing now, this may have been more difficult than we thought. James's are completely bready, overwhelming. How's that sauce looking? 
There's no seasoning in there. You can't ignore the marinara on this dish. Yeah, absolutely. Chrissy looks slightly disappointed, and she's not cleaned the squid properly. However, I like the way that she's slicing it nice and thinly, so she's going for an ultra crisp squid. She may pull this off again. I don't want to see her in the top five. My big worry right now is Bree's pan is about to explode in fire. That burnt oil is going to impart a horrible yeah. flavor into each piece. Feel the hard way too hot. They're not cooking inside. Bro, yes, I did. I did the podcast with Will today. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? What is this? What is this? What is going on? And it's a fucking ban evasion account. Just say what your bait is and let's move on, please. What do you want? What do you want, sock account? What's the bait? What is the question? What do you want? Yes. No, this is not like a normal person. This is a, a complete psycho. Is it pog? Okay, pog, dude. Here you go. Fucking weirdo. She's gonna get burned if she doesn't be careful. You're screaming. 90 seconds to go. Come on. Taste everything, guys. Think smartly and do not underestimate the power of your sauce. Come on, guys. 30 seconds to go. Come on. Finishing touches. Season. Be careful drinking the Mountain Dews. They got yellow five in them that make your pee-pee small. That's actually good. Finally, it'll be like, you know, just a very large penis rather than, you know, monster size. Not a bad thing. You know, we could shave off a couple inches if you know what I'm saying. Everything. Five. Better for your mom. Four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Well done. Please bring your calamari down to the front bench. Thank you. I've struggled with this challenge, but you know, in the end, I came back and turned it around. So I'm feeling good. Brie, let's start with you. Visually, they're very thick, those rings. How do I know they're cooked? I cut one open and tested it. Did you eat it? No, chef. How did you test it? I open it up and see what the consistency was and make sure it looked like it was cooked. Yours look heavily coated in flour. It's all clumped together where yeah. you haven't dusted them down properly. Okay. Normally when you have excess flour mm -hmm. that hits the fryer, it burns instantly. And so you can just, you can just smell that plate. Okay, it smells slightly burnt, even though it's not burnt. So you've got that sort of perfume burn smell. Okay. I wish you could. Dude, oh, come the fuck on, dude. No, this is anti-vegetarian propaganda. They like literally, he, he's starting off with a discriminatory attitude towards Brie because of her vegetarian background, okay? That's, that's a fucking bullshit. You could have tasted them because you would have put less flour on there. I want the calamari to be the hero, okay. not what you dredge them in. Thank you. Thank you, chef. All right. That one that I just tried was definitely undercooked. Let's take a look. I mean, you can see that the breading is fried, right. but this inside is complete squid tartare. So, thanks. Okay, tell me about your marinara. So my marinara, marinara. is garlic, tomatoes, a little bit of Italian seasoning, and lemon juice. Why do you put lemon juice in tomato sauce? Because in this particular dish, it was complementing seafood. Brie, you're a smart girl. That's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Tomatoes are inherently so acidic that adding acidity, I mean, it's just unheard of. Okay. It's too raw. Chrissy. So visually, I mean, to me, it looks like a plate of onion rings. <laughs> Marinara sauce, how have you made that? Just uh, tomatoes, I crushed them up with my hand, olive oil, garlic, red pepper flakes, and uh, just some fresh parsley in there. Mm -hmm. How many times did you egg wash this? Just once. Can you see what I'm saying? It's just like this sponge texture. How did you cook them? Um, I just, I fried them. I had the, the oil was way too hot, so I brought it down a little bit. How did you cool down oil fast? Add cold oil. Are you done? Absolutely not. So how do you think that's going to keep you in the competition? 
because I didn't put lemon juice in my marinara and it's not roll. Damn. Tell me about the marinara. I just crush up my tomatoes. I usually put fresh basil, a little bit of olive oil, pepper. Garlic? Onion. Yeah, I put like uh, three cloves in. You know, your marinara is garlicky, it's rich. Come on. Bro, she says simple as. You know, I didn't fuck up as hard as the others. All right, it's sweet, it's cooked through. The batter is a little like fried, like funnel cake, like fried dough on a street fair. Chrissy, could you imagine going home on fried calamari, you? What are they gonna say? They'll probably laugh at me and break my bowls forever. It might not be that funny because you could have just walked away from being very close to winning a quarter of a million dollars. Yep. I'm a little worried about my marinara. I kind of forgot about it, so I'm hoping they don't notice that. But they will. <laughs> James. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> not Graham, homie. You crazy. So they're all pretty much uniform in size. Feeling them. You can tell right now that they are cooked just the way you want them. What about your frying technique? I was kind of thinking that instead of leaving it in for over a minute, if they were sliced thinner and the batter wasn't as super, super heavy, mm -hmm. everything would get done at the same time. All right, how about the sauce? It smells like canned tomato juice, you know, like you're on an airplane. He's not, yeah. Damn, that tastes like the tin can. I thought you Bro, he is never going to let you get away with that. Are you kidding me? He's the fucking sauce boss. Look at him. Look at him. This is, this is punished Graham. He's got the, like, the navy on navy with the red. It's just, he's mad. He's hurt. He's been hurt by life. You were like the sauce guy. Uh, apparently not. It's too bad. James. Visually, it's the perfect size. It really is the perfect size. I love it. I love the precision of the way you're working so thinly. What have you done to the sauce? Uh, it's just garlic, crushed red pepper, and sea salt with the tomatoes. It's got a very funny aftertaste. I don't know what it is. No olive oil in there? Uh, no olive oil. No olive oil at all in the tomato no sauce? No olive oil in marinara. Yeah. Yeah. Joe is, like, ready. It's, like, the one thing he knows, bro. Jesus Christ, dude. The one thing he knows is marinara. Remember, has he, like, described earlier? So he's like, oh, no olive oil? It's like, shut up, dude. It's got that horrible taste. You need that olive oil. Yeah. And you, you know, need the olive oil. I was expecting better. Yeah, I'm just disappointed. Way too close to call, and you've just made it a lot more difficult than it had to be. So maybe all three of us should go home. No olive oil. That would be nice. This is too close to call, and you've just made it a lot more difficult than it had to be. So maybe all three of us should go home. We need some time. If I go home on calamari, I will be the laughing stock of the neighborhood. My credibility as an Italian, ruined. <laughs> it's a very difficult uh, challenge. I don't think they give a shit, Chrissy. You're kind of a dick. Pretty sure, pretty sure they don't care, the people around you. But also, it doesn't even fucking matter. Challenge this one. Very tough. James was disappointed. Because she's I not going to get clapped. She's yeah. not. Bri as well. She was scared. I've never seen her slightly this petrified. I like my marinara. That's hard. Very, very difficult. They will never... They will never grade James, Chrissy on a curve. Please step forward. Joe, Graham, and myself felt that your calamari was... It was the least bad. The best performance of this evening. Please, take your apron off. Make your way yeah. to the gallery. You're now in the top five of MasterChef. Classic. James is safe. Now, I'm not even religious, but I'm praying to God that Chrissy goes home. Nice to join us. God damn, even Natasha doesn't like Three. her. That's crazy. One of you will be leaving MasterChef tonight. One of you will be entering the top five of this competition. If I lose to a vegetarian, I will literally go home and give up cooking. Oh my God, that would be incredible. That would be incredible to find out, you know. 
if only you were subscribed because at the top of the hour there's a 60 second ad break and unfortunately it's coming right now you know what i mean because at the top of the hour there's a 60 second ad break and uh, you know we would all want to find out whether uh, chrissy went home and got owned by a fucking vegetarian or not but fortunately it's just there's a 60 second ad break right now coming up and if you no longer want to see those ads though don't worry all you need to do is subscribe you can do that for five dollars you can do that for free you can do that by getting gifted and stuff from Stuart Salam Salami Salama Mommy. Thank you for the five get the subs, Stuart Salami. Um, here's the woman ad break now. It's crazy, it's crazy that. Listen, Gordo likes doing debates. Gordo likes doing debates. I like doing this. This is all I have. Okay, Gordo has debates. I have top of the hour ad breaks. And it gets harder and harder to fucking bait you no matter what happens because because it comes at the top of the hour every time. So I got to switch it around a little bit. You know what I mean? Laura, what if, if only the freeloaders could still see the show. Oh, right. It's in the top right corner. Stream still visible. I don't even know what it looks like when it's uh when it's on an ad break. So maybe maybe the ad watchers will still be able to see it, you know? But Robert J90 has allowed five people to no longer see it. Also get Three. fucked. The ad break Tonight, is over. This calamari pressure test got the better of me. You know that. Yes, chef. Could you cope with leaving this competition twice? Probably would never forgive myself for it. Chrissy, please step forward. You have come so far, but it's time for you to say goodbye to Bree. To take your apron off and head on upstairs to the gallery. No! You are safe. Oh, man. It sucks. Bree, you know what this means. You Bubble. are leaving the competition once more. I've never known. It's just fucking ruthless when they double clap her. And we already know the lore, okay? We already know what the fuck happened to her. She's now a pharma exec. I don't even... I fault Gordo for this. I'm gonna be honest with you. I fault Gordo for a fraction of the opioid uh, epidemic here in the United States of America. Because she spiraled out of control and became like a pharma exec, okay? And, and honestly, who could fault her for fucking spiraling out of control when she got double limbed by the racist? What are you, what are you supposed to do? A tenacious vegetarian to cook meat the way you do. You are going places, let me tell you. Gordon wanted to bring you back. He was right. You have a big heart, and I think you have a big future in whatever you want to do. You should be very proud, because we are. <laughs> Follow that dream. He was personally responsible for 70,000 deaths in 2019 alone. It's her time to go home. It's like, it's dark. Self into a kitchen. Come here, you. Oh. Amazing job. Now. <laughs> She's a rep, not an exec. She's not awesome. even a rep. She does biz dev, doesn't she? That's like... She's not a. She's not in sales. She's, just, she's doing bid dev, no which is like finding unique ways and new ways to sell pharma to doctors to shill, to shill opiates to doctors. And me, James. James, and if there's any parting advice you could give to Chrissy now, what would it be? Where he got the last lab, and she now charges Chrissy five eggs for her insulin. Oh my God. Be nice, please. Try to be nice. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Get out of here. Please put your apron on your bench. Hi guys. Bye, Coming back into this competition was everything to me. Please welcome back, Bree. I've never been given a second chance before in my life. Even though I was only here for a short time, I learned so much. It's delicious. Good job. You really nailed it. Well done, Bree. Thank you. And I will take every single thing I've ever learned from the judges because they are the three greatest teachers I have ever had. I've seen chatters unironically say stuff like oh yeah she's like partially responsible for the opioid epidemic for like working at a big pharmaceutical that literally was sued by the state of oklahoma for uh opiate distribution 
Well, guess what? She's a vegetarian, so she's still less deadly than most of the carnists in here. Like, someone has actually fucking said that in this chat before.